Our doctors tell us, you are what you eat, and this is true. But the Bible tells us that we are what we think. Proverbs 23 verse 7, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. The truth is, what we think is what we believe, and what we believe is who we become. And unfortunately for many children of God, there is a problem with how we think about ourselves. We believe the wrong things about ourselves. Based on one negative life event or because of what another person's opinion was. But what someone else thinks of you does not have to define you. It's true what they say. Opinions are not facts. So stop worrying about other people's opinions and stop worrying about what other people think. Just because that man or that woman left you does not mean you're unlovable. You shouldn't let what other people's opinions affect your destiny in life. Some may have told you, you will never amount to anything, but that does not make it true. It only becomes true if you choose to believe it. Realize the difference between truth and opinion. Their opinion does not have to be truth. Their opinion is not your reality. Don't spend your time thinking about what others may think of you. The only person's opinion you need to be concerned about is God's. He is the only one who knows who you really are. He is the only one who knows your potential. He is the only one who truly knows the contents of your heart. So stop letting other people's opinions define you. Stop letting them influence your thoughts. And this is one of the many reasons why renewing our minds as believers is so important. We hold on to one life event. We hold on to what someone says about us or what someone has said about us or one experience in life. And we think that's who we are. Think of what God has told you you are. Believe what his word says about you. The only way you can do this is by renewing your mind. Change the way you perceive yourself. Change the way you see yourself because you become what you believe. Do you believe that you're a child of the most high? Do you believe that you're the head and not the tail? Who do you believe you are? You see, when you believe these things, when you think these things, you become them. And it's not only you who see the change, but it's all the people around you. All the people that have been sprouting their opinions will also see it. They will see that you're a child of God. They will see that you're more than an overcomer. They will see that you are blessed and highly favored. They will see that surely goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. It's a marvelous thing that God did when he created us in his own image. So, how do we renew our minds? Firstly, we have to be born again. At the moment we give our life to Christ, the new birth takes place. The process of your mind being renewed begins and begins to set into motion. At this moment, the Holy Spirit will come into you and will dwell with you. And the establishment of your relationship with God will begin. Moving on. For our mind to be renewed, we need to know the word of God. You see, the Bible is a spiritual book. And without the Holy Spirit, you will never be able to understand the Bible. The Bible has nothing to do with your intellect. It's to do with your spirit, the inner man. This is why without the Holy Spirit, you can read the Bible. And it won't have the same effect as someone with the Holy Spirit who reads the Bible. 2 Timothy 3.16 all scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Now for you and me to renew our mind, we need to know the word of God. For you to become a complete man or woman of God, you need to know the word of God. There is no substitute, absolutely no substitute for the word of God. The Bible is our reference point. It's the anchor to our soul. If your thoughts about yourself are about how you're not good enough or how you're not smart enough 
or how you're not beautiful enough. I encourage you to discover what the word of God says about you and renew your mind. Genesis 1.27 records that God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created them. You and I are created in the image of God. You're not created by accident. You didn't randomly come into being. God created you. You're not a random misfit that just happened to be born. God specifically created you. Psalms 82 verse 6 confirms this. I said you are gods, sons of the highest, all of you. Do you see what the word of God says about you? You are uniquely designed, a masterpiece. You have been given the ability to create like God can create, to communicate, to worship, to love, to reason. God made you just the way you are. You are gifted by God. No one can see the world like you do. No one can walk like you do. You are one of a kind. Once God created you, he got rid of the mold. There will never be another you in this universe. Even if you have a son or a daughter that looks exactly like you, they are not you. You are uniquely made. And we as humans have been given different purposes than any other of God's creations. A tree can only ever be a tree. But you as a human have the ability to change the trajectory of your lives if you're not happy. God intentionally created you that way. God's stamp of approval is in you. You have royal blood within your veins. It doesn't matter how tall you are or how short you are. If you have straight hair or curly hair, you are beautiful just the way God made you. And this is one of the many revelations that you will come to see when you renew your mind. God does not make mistakes. The more and more you read the word of God and receive it, the process of renewal of your mind begins. When you read the word of God, you begin to realize God doesn't make mistakes. You begin to think like God, to love what God loves, to hate what God hates. In order to know how God wants you to live, you must know his word. And if you want to know what God thinks of you, we must study his word. The word of God has power to renew your mind, but it needs to get inside you. And once it gets inside of you, there is a transformation that takes place. Are you struggling with sin? The book has the answer for you. Are you broken hearted and lonely? In the Bible you will find someone that loves you and cares for you. Someone who will give their life for you. In actuality he already gave his life for you. That's who you will find in this Bible. That is the kind of love you can have. We don't deserve it but it's just been given to us. The word of God has the power to renew your mind. Moving on, working alongside with knowing the word of God. It is important that we pray. I am a big advocate of prayer. The prayer life of every child of God shows you how committed they are to God. Because prayer is not only a one-line communication. Prayer is a two-line communication. We pray to God and God speaks to us. We engage in prayer so that we open the doors for God to speak to us. You see, the spiritual realm is far bigger than we know or can imagine. It's bigger than the physical world that we know. The voices that want to speak to us in the natural physical world are so many. Now imagine how many more voices are in the spiritual realm that want to speak to our minds, to speak to our minds. So as we pray and are guided by the Holy Spirit, we are receiving the correct frequency our way. The more you and I pray, the clearer the frequency between yourself and God becomes. Therefore, you are able to distinguish whether the thoughts that come into your mind are of God or not because of these three things that I've already stated. Firstly, you are born again. Therefore, you're a child of God and the relationship with your heavenly father is established. You are born into spiritual things. The spirit man is awakened. Secondly, your mind is in the process of being renewed by the word of God. And thirdly, through prayer. 
the Bible stresses the importance of our mind being renewed. And what you need to know is God is not only alive and well. God is not only in charge of the whole universe watching over each and every one of us. He is concerned about each and every one of us and he's willing to speak to each and every one of us individually. The Bible says God is not a respecter of persons. God will speak to you. James 4, 8, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. You see, the emphasis here is on you. Hebrews 11, 6 states, he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. The word diligently means constant effort, persistent, a relentless pursuit. In other words, when we draw near to God, you just don't do it once in a while when you feel like it. To diligently seek him is to drop things that are stealing your time from reading the word of God and praying and spending time with him. Spending time with him becomes a priority in your life. It is a persistent, constant effort to draw nigh unto him. There is an old saying that says, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. There is another saying, show me your friends and I'll tell you who you are. There are truths in both these statements. And we see in the Bible people who were God's friend. At the beginning of time, God would come into the garden looking for Adam. In Genesis 5.24, we see that Enoch walked with God and was not, for God took him. Just imagine that, having such a close walk with God, that he simply invites you into the spirit realm with him, to spend eternity with him. We also see Abraham is called the friend of God in 2 Chronicles 20 verse 7 and in Isaiah 41 verse 8. I've said all this to end at this point. The truth is the company we keep influences the way we think, thus resulting in our mindset. In essence, we become more and more and more like the friends we keep. So I ask you today, are you friends with God? The more you are his friend, the more you love him with all your heart, which is the first commandment. And the more you begin to love other people. Because God loves the world so much that he gave his only begotten son. All of this happens because of the renewed mind. Your renewed mind begins to transform your life. So much so that you begin to display godly traits. For instance, godliness, compassion. You begin to show love to your brothers and sisters. And you begin to focus on things that are and you begin to focus on things that are eternal and not temporary. Proverbs 23, 7. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. Proverbs 23, 7 is a powerful statement. Solomon, in his wisdom, is telling us that there is an intrinsic link between the mind and our actions. We do what the mind says to do. The mind is the control center for our existence. If the mind is broken, the entire person is broken. If the mind is powerful, the entire person is powerful. Our thoughts are not as a result of who we are, but rather we are as a result of our thoughts. To disagree with this is to disagree with Solomon. Because of this reality, Satan goes after our minds because if he can capture the mind, the entire person is enslaved. Let me put this as simple as I can. Your body is the car and your mind is the steering wheel. The steering wheel dictates the direction of the car. That's why the enemy is so aggressive in going after the steering wheel of your life, the mind. 
When the devil spoke to our first parents, the first thing he did was to challenge the way they thought about the word of God. He asked them if God actually said what they were claiming that he said. Eve confirmed that was exactly what he said. God has said, she shall not eat it, nor shall she touch it, lest you die. The devil didn't try to persuade them that God didn't say it. Instead, he challenged the way they perceived what God said. He distorted their thoughts about God's words and intentions. If the devil can change our minds against the truths of God, he has taken us captive even before we act on those thoughts. He is cunning and will plant seeds of doubt in our minds so that we will be destabilized. James makes this point explicitly clear. He argues that the man who allows the devil to plant doubt, he is a double-minded man unstable in all his ways. James 1.8, he continues to make a link between the man's hands that are a representative of his actions and the man's heart which inspires his actions. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. James 4.8. It is all about the mind, our thoughts, define us. For the Christian he or she must cling to the assurance in 2 Timothy 1.7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. When we connect this assurance spoken by Paul with Simon's Proverbs, we see a beautiful thing happen. The redeemed is equipped by God to produce sound actions because they have sound minds. The Christian is given the power by God to control his impulses and desires because he possesses a sound mind. Remember as a man thinks, so is he. He who thinks sound thoughts is sound indeed. God has deposited power in the mind of his people and we must put it to use to be who God intends for us to be. It is the seat of control. And if our minds are unsound, we will find ourselves in perversions. The perverse man is not just perverse because he acts in that manner but because he thinks in that manner. It is said that a mind is a terrible thing to waste. A wasted mind is one that the devil has control over. We were not designed by God to be controlled by the devil. We have the power through God's Holy Spirit to triumph and walk in victory. This is only possible when the mind is as God intended. All scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Now for you and me to renew our mind, we need to know the word of God. For you to become a complete man or woman of God, you need to know the Word of God. There is no substitute, absolutely no substitute for the Word of God. The Bible is our reference point. It's the anchor to our soul. If your thoughts about yourself are about how you're not good enough, or how you're not smart enough, or how you're not beautiful enough, I encourage you to discover what the Word of God says about you and renew your mind. Genesis 1.27 records that God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created them. You and I are created in the image of God. 
You're not created by accident. You didn't randomly come into being. God created you. You're not a random misfit that just happened to be born. God specifically created you. Psalms 82 verse 6 confirms this. I said you are God's sons of the highest, all of you. Do you see what the word of God says about you? You are uniquely designed, a masterpiece. You have been given the ability to create like God can create, to communicate, to worship, to love, to reason. God made you just the way you are. You are gifted by God. No one can see the world like you do. No one can walk like you do. You are one of a kind. Once God created you, he got rid of the mold. There will never be another you in this universe. Even if you have a son or a daughter that looks exactly like you, they are not you. You are uniquely made. And we as humans have been given different purposes than any other of God's creations. A tree can only ever be a tree. But you as a human have the ability to change the trajectory of your lives if you're not happy. God intentionally created you that way. God's stamp of approval is in you. You have royal blood within your veins. It doesn't matter how tall you are or how short you are. If you have straight hair or curly hair, you are beautiful just the way God made you. And this is one of the many revelations that you will come to see when you renew your mind. God does not make mistakes. The more and more you read the word of God and receive it, the process of renewal of your mind begins. When you read the word of God, you begin to realize God doesn't make mistakes. You begin to think like God, to love what God loves, to hate what God hates. In order to know how God wants you to live, you must know his word. And if you want to know what God thinks of you, we must study his word. The word of God has power to renew your mind, but it needs to get inside you. And once it gets inside of you, there is a transformation that takes place. Are you struggling with sin? The book has the answer for you. Are you broken hearted and lonely? In the Bible you will find someone that loves you and cares for you. Someone who will give their life for you. In actuality he already gave his life for you. That's who you will find in this Bible. That is the kind of love you can have. We don't deserve it but it's just been given to us. The word of God has the power to renew your mind. The Bible says in James 4, 8, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. You see the emphasis here is on you. Hebrews 11, 6 states, he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. The word diligently means constant effort, persistent, a relentless pursuit. In other words, when we draw near to God, you just don't do it once in a while when you feel like it. To diligently seek him is to drop things that are stealing your time from reading the word of God and praying and spending time with him. Praying and spending time with him becomes a priority in your life. It is a persistent, constant effort to draw nigh unto him. There is an old saying that says, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. There is another saying, show me your friends and I'll tell you who you are. There are truths in both these statements. And we see in the Bible people who were God's friend. At the beginning of time, God would come into the garden looking for Adam. In Genesis 5.24, we see that Enoch walked with God and was not, for God took him. Just imagine that, having such a close walk with God, that he simply invites you into the spirit realm with him to spend eternity with him. We also see Abraham is called the friend of God in 2 Chronicles 20 verse 7 and in Isaiah 41 verse 8. I've said all this to end at this point. The truth is the company we keep influences the way we think, thus resulting in our mindset. In essence, we become more and more and more like the friends we keep. So I ask you today, are you friends with God? The more you are his friend, the more you love him with all your heart. 
which is the first commandment. And the more you begin to love other people, because God loves the world so much that he gave his only begotten son. All of this happens because of the renewed mind. Your renewed mind begins to transform your life. So much so that you begin to display godly traits. For instance, godliness, compassion. You begin to show love to your brothers and sisters. And you begin to focus on things that are eternal and not temporary. The mind is the battleground. One of the most powerful assets and beautiful gifts God gave us as human beings is our mind. It's one of those qualities that make us distinct and far higher than animals. We as believers grossly underestimate the power of our minds. Sometimes all we need to change a horrid situation around is one decision from our mind. I can even go as far as saying, where you are today is because of your mind. Proverbs 23 verse 7 For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. The mind is so powerful that it is what we use to serve the Lord. What goes on in our mind has a great impact on our life, our approach to life, and fulfilling our destiny in Christ. We might not know this, but our mind is the orbit of our reactions and perspective to issues and circumstances that we go through in life. Now here is the question, what kind of mind is a believer expected to have? Apart from the beautiful gift of our mind that God gave us as humans, God also gave us the power of choice, choice of the thoughts that we allow into our mind. We don't have to entertain every thought that drops into our mind or think any thought that strays into it if we don't want to. God gave us that much control over it. The Bible instructs us to always guard our heart diligently because the moment we ease down or let our hair down and the devil sees that no one is in charge, he will slide in quickly or creep into our life while our heart is unguarded and vulnerable. We have to be conscious of the thoughts that emanate from our minds because they have causal and consequential effects on our life. Proverbs 4 verse 23 Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Our minds form our thought patterns, emotions, motivations and totality. The thoughts that stem from our hearts can be crucial to our growth or destructive to our life journey. What we think we are is exactly what we are. It's that simple. Once again, Proverbs 23 verse 7 As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Our thoughts, either good, bad, positive or negative, determine our attitude and then our attitude determines our actions. Our thoughts have a domino effect on our relationship and engagements with others. But as believers, one thing is sure. We have the mind of Christ and know all things through him. The mind of Christ is the transformed mind that loves God and seeks to do his will through the empowerment and enabling of the Holy Spirit. It is the mind that draws its reality from the Word of God. It attacks all negative thoughts and sinfulness. This mind of Christ is what we ought to aspire to have as Christians. So what can I do to develop a mind that agrees with God? Because our mind is our greatest asset and can be our greatest stronghold or kryptonite, we should let God take control of it. The devil is always on the prowl to snatch it and dominate it with his thoughts. Not every thought that comes to our mind should be allowed to linger. We need to think about what we are thinking. How do we control our thoughts? We have to make conscious efforts and be deliberate about what we watch, hear, and feed our minds with. 
These things have a way of creeping into our lives and contributing to our thought patterns. We shouldn't be so obsessed about knowing everything that's going on in the world that we fail to invest in our relationship with God or spend time in His presence. We should avoid things that trigger fear and jeopardize our peace of mind. We can fix our mind on God every day to develop the mind of Christ. What we need to do is clearly stated in His Word. When our gaze is constantly fixed on the things that are God's, then we will be able to surmount every temptation or negative thinking that comes our way. Even if we are faced with overwhelming trials and challenges, like the loss of a job, the tragic demise of a loved one, family problems, bad debt, or suffer a significant loss, we will not lose our trust or think all our hope is gone. We will be able to look at the situation and say, It is well. God is good. God is planning something great for me. We will be like the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We will be able to go through the fires of life, but the fires won't be able to get into us. Our faith will not waver, just like the three Hebrew boys. The problem a lot of us have is that we gaze at the situation, we gaze at the challenge, we gaze at the doctor's report, we gaze at the bill, we gaze our bank balance, we gaze at what the news reporter says, and not at God. In whatever situation you are in life, focus on God and what His Word says. If you are facing financial difficulty, focus on Philippians 4 verse 19, And my God shall supply all your need according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. If you are facing issues with your health, focus on Isaiah 53 verse 5. By his stripes I am healed. If you are struggling with a self-defeating mind that you cannot do it, you are not good enough to succeed, you will never amount to anything. Focus on Philippians 4 verse 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If you are struggling with self-image issues, that you are not beautiful enough, no one will love me. Focus on Proverbs 23, verse 7. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Whatever self-defeating thought that enters your mind, use the word of God against it until you develop the mind of Christ. Daily Renewing Our Mind Romans 12, verse 2 The transformation of our mind is a continuous process. By studying the word of God daily, and tarrying in His presence, our minds are consistently transformed, and we can do what is in the Word and apply it for our daily living. It's a gradual process that takes conscientious effort and decision to attain, but we can see the gradual effect and change in our life as we continue to journey with Him. It's amazing how thoughts that emanate from someone's mind define a lot in their lives. Just think about one thought that can change the trajectory of your life and your whole families. That is how powerful the mind is. That is why developing the mind of Christ is so important. There's power in our minds. Our physical and spiritual well-being is a byproduct of what we let dominate our minds. Our mind is supposed to be the overflow and wellspring of all good thoughts and thinking, as this is going to shape our decisions and turn out in life. We are definitely going to face temptations in life. We can't run away from them, but we can choose how we handle and deal with them through our decisions and attitude. The mind is very important to God. With it, we can scale heights and become everything God has destined us to be. In changing our mindset and channeling our energy into positive thinking, we are indirectly changing our lives and tilting towards becoming whom God wants us to be. I heard this wonderful quote. It said, 
The mind is one of the hardest areas to get under control and keep under control. Part of why it's hard is because Satan will attack you with lies and deceptions. You need to guard yourself against that. If you don't, your life could be one miserable day after the next. Positive thinking doesn't just happen. It's something you have to do on purpose. You have to believe God's word is for you. Then you need to hear yourself say what you believe. Once again, Proverbs 23 verse 7 As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Make sure you subscribe to the new Line of Judah Prayer channel. Click the link in the description.